Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in. We would, uh, we would like at this point to deny certain rumors that have been spread around to the effect that we of the inner sanctum lack culture. Why, we have our own shelf of the world's great classics. In our case, a six-foot shelf, naturally. <laughs> We subscribe regularly to such magazines as the Saturday Evening Ghost. We're all members of the Spook of the Month Club. There's nothing we like more than curling up in a fire with a copy of Shakespeare's immortal Midsummer Night's Scream. <laughs> in short, we are people definitely interested in the spirit. And I can safely say that all of us here have received their degree. Usually the third. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, Death's Little Brother, was written by Lou Vittus and stars Larry Haynes in the role of Danny with Amsie Strickland as Susie. the windows, bolt the door, pull the shade down, pay the premium on your life insurance, and listen to Death's Little Brother, a happy-minded opus devoted to the thesis that nobody lives forever, and most people even less. <laughs> Meet Danny, a lad on a train, his ticket paid on his way to... Suppose you find out. The big idea about trains is that they go someplace. Someplace where people want to get to. I wasn't going anyplace. I was only getting out of town. The cops wanted to talk to me about a coffee pot that got itself held up. After the conversation, I would have wound up in front of a jury and the judge would have made a speech about crime and I'd have spent a year or maybe two in state prison. So I got on a train. Any train. I wasn't particular. But the rest of the people, they picked this train. It was going to places they knew about. Places they wanted to be. I looked at them and hated every one of them. Including the guy who flopped into the seat next to mine. It was around my age, around my size. To somebody in a hurry, he could have been my brother. Quite a train, huh? Quite a train. Say, would you know how long it'll be before we get to Dorchester? No, I wouldn't know. That's where I'm headed for. I guess that. Yeah. You, uh, you think they got a smoker on this train? I wouldn't be surprised. I think I'll go find it. Second train I've been on tonight. A guy was overdoing it. Not only one train, two trains. A guy was very anxious to get something. So anxious, he hadn't noticed his wallet dropping out of his pocket. I had. A couple of tens, a handful of ones. It went into my pocket fast. Driver's license, which said the guy's name was Clark Davis. Odds and ends of junk. A letter. A letter which smelled of perfume, nice perfume. I read it. Clark Davis had a sister named Susie. She wrote the letter. The mother and father had died 20 years ago in a car crash. An uncle named Davis had brought up the guy. The girl had gone to another uncle named Carter. Out in Africa, Uncle Carter had died and left his dough, lots of it, to his niece Susie and to his nephew Clark. Clark and Susie hadn't seen each other for 20 years. I put the dough back into the wallet. Susie was in the old family shack in Dorchester. That was where Clark was going. That was where I was going. 
Say, did you happen to notice... This? Yeah, my wallet. You dropped it. Thanks. For a while, I was afraid it was gone. It's come back. Thanks again. He went to sleep sitting in the seat next to me. I didn't go to sleep. Susie and Clark hadn't seen each other for 20 years. I wasn't going anyplace in particular. Dorchester might be just as good a place to get off at as any. Maybe even better. You got off here too, huh? Yeah, it looks that way, don't it? Oh, that dump. Station's dark, not a cab in sight. Wasn't anybody supposed to meet you? I didn't tell her what train I was coming on. Her? My sister. Oh. Live in town? Nope. I'm out on Lakeshore Drive, wherever that is. I know where it is. You wait here. Huh? I'm heading out that direction myself. Maybe I can rustle up a car. Hey, thanks. I swallowed you. Now forget it. It's on my way. I'd spotted a sign down the street. A cheap hotel battling with termites. I went in. Hey. Huh? Oh, yeah. Where's Lakeshore Drive? Oh, a couple of miles out, east on the highway. Can't miss the turn off. I need a car to get there, don't I? Yep. Got one you can let me have? Uh, old station wagon, but uh, you didn't mention your name. No, I didn't, did I? It's Clark Davis. Susan Carter's brother? Yeah. Well, we've been hearing a lot about you and Tom. How about that station wagon? Why, sure, seeing as who you are. Won't have any need of it tonight. Here you are. Glad to be of service. Rod's fine, only you've got to be careful of the brake. Don't worry, I'll be careful. So long. The station wagon was there, and so was Clark. Came along after you. Yeah, that station wagon. Hop in. Okay. I was pretty sure nobody had seen Clark get into the car. And pretty sure it would have to be good enough. turn off in ten minutes, and I began pumping the hand choke. Clark had his eyes closed. What? Hey, what, what happened? Motor. I'll, uh, have to take a look at it. Know much about cars? Oh, not a thing. Might be trouble. Now, let's see what's under the hood. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Carburetor's flooded. Is that bad? Not serious. Take a while to drain off. In the meantime, there's a lake over there. Like to take a look at it? Yeah, sure. The bank's kind of steep. Oh, there's no hurry. The water looks good. About three quarters of sleep. Now, why don't you get some water on your face? Might wake you up. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Oh, it's cold. Cold and deep. Davis. Huh? How's your sister going to know it's you when you show up? I'll tell her. Didn't you send her any pictures of yourself? No, I haven't got any pictures. Come on down here. The water's fine. Yeah, sure. Say, it just occurred to me. How come you know about Susie and me? Hotel clerk, town gossip. Oh. Better be careful with rocks. I'll be careful. And I was. There were lots of rocks around. I didn't grab just any rock. I picked one that was heavy enough, but not too heavy to handle easy. And I went down. Well, I certainly feel a lot better. Hey, what do you got that rock for? The rock? <laughs> you weren't thinking of trying to skip that across the water, were you? Skip it? What across. you need is a flat rock. One a whole lot smaller. What I need is this rock. <laughs> he went down, sprawling over the rocks at the edge of the lake. He wasn't dead, but after a while... <clears throat> he was dead. I went through his pockets. While that identification letter from Susan Carter, the works... I went into my pockets. It wasn't robbery, though. I gave him my wallet. And I gave him some rocks, too. Loaded his pockets with him. So when I dumped him in the lake, he went down. He'd stay down, too, for a while. And if he came up in a week or two, he'd be a guy called Danny, wanted by the cops for larceny. And he wouldn't have much of a face left to identify. I turned around and headed back for the car. 
Now I was somebody who had some place to go to. Yes? Hello, Susie. Hello. Oh, you must Haven't be... Haven't you got a kiss for your big brother? Clark. Oh. <sighs> I, uh... Didn't wire. I thought I'd surprise you. Oh, it's a wonderful surprise, Clark. Oh, I'm so glad you came. I was lonely. Lonely? Well, this is your home. Uh, I'd never lived in it. Uncle and I were abroad all these years. Oh, but of course you know that. Yeah, sure. Your letter. See? It's funny. After such a long time. But you know, Clark, I think I'm going to like my brother. He's kind of handsome. Well, I guess it runs in the family. Thank you, darling. Say, uh, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Oh, of course you are. Come on. I'll show you a room. I sort of expected Mrs. Brenner to be with you, though. Mrs. Brenner? I bet she's a wonderful person. Mrs. Brenner. Clark, what's the matter with you? I- I'm talking about the housekeeper. The one who practically brought you up. You wrote me about her, don't you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, I remember her. Uh... I'm just foggy. I haven't had much sleep. I know. Well, like your room? Yeah, it's swell. I've got Mrs. Brenner's room ready for her down the hall. Susie. Yes? Susie, she... uh, She didn't come with me because... uh, Well, because she wasn't feeling too good. Uh, Matter of fact, I, I don't know when she'll get here. You're worried about her. That's sweet, Clark, but you don't really have to. Huh? I got a phone call from her, oh, about half an hour before you came. You did? Uh Uh-huh. She said she'll be here first thing in the morning. Good night, Clark. With Mrs. Brenner due in the morning, Mrs. Brenner, who knew Clark Davis, I had things to think about. One of them was finding out when the train came in. I found out. It was coming in early the next morning. Which meant I had to be early, too. Very early. Clark? Huh? Oh, Susie. Good morning, darling. But why are you up so early? Oh, what about you? I always get up early. Don't forget I'm taking care of the house. Well, I, uh... Got to get the station wagon back to the hotel. They don't need it. Not right away. And besides, Mrs. Brenner's coming in. Oh. I want to meet her at the train. Well, she could always get a cab. Yeah, but, uh, well, I'd like to make sure she gets here. I'd uh, like to make sure. But she didn't come in. But on that train. Hi, Mr. Davis. Huh? Oh, the clerk. Yep. Seen somebody off? No. Expecting somebody? No. Well, it's fun watching trains. I brought the hotel station wagon. Oh, well, it was no great hurry. A uh, cigarette, Mr. Davis? I don't smoke. Ain't much of a habit. I guess the other fella left this pack in the station wagon then. Other fella? Uh, one that you was with last night. I was alone. Looked kind of sick. Guess he's staying out at the house with you. I tell you, I was alone. Thought you might have some trouble starting the wagon. You was so nervous. Well, I was tired, that's all. So I kind of drifted over to the window in front of the hotel. Seen you help him in. I told you I was alone. That's right. I uh, I guess the pack of cigarettes could have been left in the car before last night. Sure. Even though I cleaned it out thorough before you took it. And uh, I guess... Maybe I could have made a mistake about uh, seeing another fella get in with you. Mr. Davis. Sure. I need a little time to think about uh, these mistakes. Get my mind straight about them. Can't do that if I have to keep on working. I don't get it. Well, I could use a vacation. And take one. I can't afford it. Less than a rich young fellow like you who feels like helping out. Well, I have a whole got... town knows about the legacy, Mr. Davis. Now, uh, I ain't the fancy kind. Say, a uh, couple of thousand dollars, hmm? A couple of thousand. You're crazy. No. Just need a vacation, awful bad. Say, uh, tonight? Tonight? Yep. All right. Where can I meet you? Well, stop by the house. No, no. My sister. Well, outside the house, then. 
Okay. Uh, down near the road, by the lake. Sounds all right. Around eight? You better wait inside the house till you hear a hoot owl go three times. I do awful good hoot owl. Ain't any real ones around, so you'll know it's me. Yeah, but... I uh, don't want you waiting outside for me in the dark. You <laughs> might catch cold. So long, Mr. Davis. See you tonight. And uh, besides doing a good hoot owl, I'm pretty good at shooting things. Comes from hunting. You don't want to forget that, do you? <laughs> Clark? Yeah? You're so fidgety. Well, I'm uh, kind of worried. About Mrs. Brenner? She'll probably show up tomorrow. No, no, not about her. Uh, Susie, uh, Susie, I've, I've got some debts to take care of. Oh? I, uh, I guess the legacy is all set, isn't it? Uh-huh. I'd like to lay my hands on some of it. Just, uh, just for the fun of it. Well, it'll take only about a week before it comes through, Clark. A week? Oh, you know all the legal red tape and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but a week can be an awful long time. Uh, Susie, you wouldn't have any money. Of course I have. Well, well, how much can you let me have against my share, of course? Two, three hundred dollars? That's all. Clark, are you in trouble? No, 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 of course not, only... Well, well, do you think the lawyer in charge of the estate might advance some dollar? I don't think so. Why not? Well, most of Uncle's money is tied up abroad. So... Yeah, Yeah, well, that settles that. Settles what? I'll just have to wait, Susie. That's all. I might have paid the clerk off if I had the money. Might have. But this way it was going to be cheaper and safer. He was waiting for me down by the lake. And he had a gun. He told me that. I'd have to come to him facing him for thought. But if I got the lake... I'd had all day to find a boat. I found one. There was no moon, so it was dark. There was a wind which made noise. More than noise enough to cover the sound of the boat, even, even if he'd been listening for it, and he wasn't. He was wearing a white shirt, which made it easy. He was standing a couple of feet from the shore, facing towards the house. I let the boat drift the last few yards. Quiet. Besides, I needed an oar for another purpose. It was a heavy oar. I was out of the boat and hit the shallow water. There was a splash, but it didn't register on him until I was close. Hey, what? He started turning. It's almost all the way around. When... Oh, oh. Oh, oh. When I got back, Susie asleep. That was good. I'd had enough for a day, more than enough. I went to my room and hit the head. I didn't bother on Jesse. I wanted darkness fast. Darkness and quiet and sleep. And though I didn't expect it to come, it came. Sleep. Dreaming, sure, but I had to go outside. When I got close to where I put him, there was no more sound. The earth over him hadn't even been touched. He was still under it, deep under it, where I'd put him after I finished with the oar. Even if he'd still been able to hoot like an arch, you couldn't hurt him, not with all that earth on top of him. I'm sure I'd been dreaming. back to the house. That's where the hoot owl was yelling from, except that when I got back, the house was the same. My room was the same. Until I put the lights on. I nearly let go of that. I nearly turned and ran because... Because sitting in the chair next to my bed 
It was Mr. Davis. Mr. Clark Davis. Dead and in person. The water was dripping from his clothes onto the floor, but there was no blood, nothing more. He was cold when I touched him because I had to touch him. I didn't want to. I wanted to run to get away, to keep running forever. But I went to him, and I touched him. And his body was cold and wet and solid. My hand didn't go through him. That was all I needed. I headed downstairs. Susie had a car, a convertible, back of the house. I was there, all right. I reached in, felt the seats. One of them was wet. I went to the front of the car and touched the hood. It was warm. All the answers except one, and that one I'd get in person. I turned back to the house. I wasn't thinking anymore, just doing what had to be done. But I should have thought because... Ah! Ah! Both shots had got me. She ain't good. Oh, not trying for anything fancy like the head. Both shots were in me, deep. I hit the ground and stayed put. Played dead. It was easy, a rehearsal. I could taste my own blood in my mouth. Soon it wouldn't be a rehearsal, but the real thing. But before that... Stopped. She was smart. Stopped a few feet away from me and waited. I didn't breathe. She wouldn't want to waste bullets, risk more noise. After a while, she came a little closer. She'd seen the blood I was lying in. She came a little closer. And I still had strength enough to roll and get a rifle and bring her down. Let me go. I got a wrist. She's still watching through the gun too far for me to get at it. But I held on to her. Clark! Darling, what's the matter with it's you? It's no use. You dragged your brother out of the lake, didn't you? You hooted like an owl. You saw me kill a hotel clerk, didn't you? I made you feel any better, I did. You better let go of me. You're not doing yourself any good bleeding the way you are. Why shoot me? Why didn't you yell for cops? You had the goods on me. All you had to do was show them your brother's body. Why drag it into my room? Why try to drive me nuts? Because you idiot. That body in your room isn't my brother. Isn't your brother? Who is he? A friend of mine. A boyfriend. What about... What about your brother? You want to save your breath? A dying man like you. What about your brother? Dead. He was murdered. By... The man you thought was my brother. Why? Because my uncle left all the money to my brother. He didn't trust me, didn't like me. So I had my brother killed. The man you met on the train was going to impersonate my brother till the wheel went through. And you had to come along. Yeah, I had to come along. When you walked in, I didn't know what to do. I tested you. There is no Mrs. Brenner, but you fell for it. So I knew you didn't come from Clarkstown. Why'd you shoot me? We could have gone through the air. Not after you killed the hotel clerk. He'll be missed. I couldn't afford to have an unsolved murder around. They'd find out about my real brother. This way, you're a killer. My brother's dead because of you. I'll get the money. She'd stop trying to get away. She was waiting for me to die. And I was dying, all right. But I was still strong enough. My throat! <laughs> Don't get your hands off! No! 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 Still strong enough to take with me. <laughs> pretty much winds up the sad story of Danny. A winsome lad who only wanted a new address and discovered that the housing situation is murder. We can sympathize with his feeling about rent ceilings, but he really shouldn't have raised the rules. Of course, it's no fun to be out in the cold, but did Danny have to go to the other extreme? The person that we really don't understand, though, is Susie. 
she didn't have to kill Danny. After all, he only wanted to be a brother to her. <laughs> Sankum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs> <laughs>